what's up you guys this is Rob from the Gay Guy Plays and today on the quick draw it's time to open up wide when we take a look at the dual toxicist. Now to be completely honest with you I'm still torn on this weapon. I've gotten a touch of the ideal versus the reality. Ideally this is an awesome weapon with a very unique mechanic that really rewards players with skill. Sounds great right? But realistically this is a highly conditional weapon that depends on your warframe's capability to control enemies and the type of enemies you're facing. Add on top of that the fact that this will most likely slow down the pace of combat and you can probably see why it's left me in a bit of a sticky situation. Now, you can pick up the dual toxicist in the infested lab of your clan dojo, after you've completed your research on the accurate. Note that this will cost you a fully built format and require mastery rank 8 to craft. However, if your clan is a bit slow on collecting components, you can always pick it up in the market pre-built along with a weapon slot and a catalyst for 175 plat. Now, the dual toxicist's primary damage type is Puncture, with a small splash of impact and slash. This makes it innately great against armored targets, but does have some issues against shielding. In addition, its triggered bonus effect adds innate toxin damage, which is great against corpus flesh and ferrite armor. This innate toxin damage will strengthen any equipped elemental combo that contains a toxin component, or, if no toxin mods are equipped, will combine with any stray element to create a combination. Now, if you don't have any stray elements or elemental combos that include toxin, it will apply as standard standard toxin damage, so be sure you're equipping the appropriate elemental combos in order to deal with the optimal amount of damage. Now at its base it deals 70 points of damage per shot, which is somewhere in the mid tier of secondaries, however it has a fire rate of 1 shot per second, meaning that without its buff this actually deals less burst damage than a lotto. In addition it's got an extremely low crit chance, a max ammo capacity of only 72 and a 2.3 reload speed, which isn't terrible but it's definitely on the higher end of the secondary reload spectrum. The only thing it's really got going for it is its status chance and its triggered effect. Now, once you snag yourself a headshot, that's when things start to get real juicy. The dual toxicist opens up, unloading at a rate of 2.5 shots per second, reducing its recoil by 75%, adding a 100% additive toxin damage bonus that scales with your base damage, and gets so worked up that it shoots off without consuming any ammo whatsoever. Note that this buff cannot be refreshed while it's active, and will need to run its course before it can be reapplied. I guess it needs to have a little bit of a cigarette break after all the excitement. Now, with its buff statistics, it actually sits in a decent spot on tier rankings. Not all the way at the top, but it's definitely a bit of an improvement. See, this is where the problem lies to me. It starts off incredibly weak, and after you trigger a conditional buff, it only becomes arguably kind of good. And only for 6 seconds. Which leads me to my biggest gripe about the dual toxicist, which is the fact that the buff cannot be refreshed while it's active. This feels completely counterintuitive since the buff itself reduces your weapon's recoil, making it the perfect time to score even more headshots. Just imagine Imagine being able to refresh the buff and going on a headshot rampage, that would be insanely fun, and totally make up for the fact that number one, the weapon is only arguably kind of good when buffed, and number two, you need to score a headshot to activate the bonuses in the first place. And let's be real here, headshots realistically aren't a 100% constant, unless you're purposefully crawling through your mission at a snail's pace to land your shots, or are using a frame with a good amount of control like Vauban, Nova, or Frost. Ideally, this will encourage better habits out of our player base and and improve everyone's skill sets, but realistically you're going to be running through at least half your mission with a glorified lotto attempting to play a targeting minigame in order to turn it into a slightly above average mid tier weapon. Now speaking of things that are a little too finicky for their own good, can we talk? Okay, so I'm going to be honest here. In my eyes, the dual toxicist is just doing way too much. Frankly, if we had a majority of its buffs innately built into the weapon itself, it would actually be a lot more fun to use. It's kind of like one of those pornos that you watch, not because it turns you on, but because it leaves you wondering, what the fuck is going on here? I just came to watch two hot people do each other, but apparently one of you wants to be in full leather and the other wants to be in a fuzzy tiger costume. I mean, just think about the pre-planning process that goes into all of that. You gotta size up the leather outfit and make sure all the holes are in the right places, otherwise that's gonna be a really awkward time. And I can't even begin to imagine having to narrow down which fuzzy animal I think is the sexiest. And let's get this straight, even without all of the extra outfits, vibrating, rotating, penetrating electronics, and edible goods, even most standard porn has people flip upside down on the floor, legs practically behind their heads, or holding themselves up halfway off the kitchen table like they're in the fucking Cirque du Soleil. You just know that none of those positions would actually be comfortable. I mean, the concept is great, on film it looks like a lot of 
fun, but it's more trouble than it's worth. And just like the dual toxicist, once you get in there, it only feels good for about six seconds. Then your ass has got to reposition. Rant aside, let's get back to the quick drop. So all in all, while I have spent a lot of time bashing it, I do have to admit that I really do actually like the dual toxicist. It feels incredibly rewarding to land headshots and get the sudden burst of effectiveness. It's also cool because loadout wise, it's really fun matching it up with warframes that have the capability to make landing headshots a bit easier. It's a weapon that makes you more cognizant of the way that you play, and I really like that. But what I don't like is the fact that the benefits are far too fleeting and aren't quite as rewarding as they could be. Frankly, I take this into normal missions for a bit of fun, but when it comes down to extended play or challenging missions, there are many more powerful weapons that have a much higher base effectiveness. On a positive note, it does come with both a V and a dash slot, which brings you a couple steps closer to a full build because, let's face it, if this baby is only going to be able to keep it up for 6 seconds at a time, you're going to need as much of a boost as possible if you're going to be playing at half max. So thank you all for watching this episode of the quick draw if you haven't already caught it be sure to check out my fanboying over u18 as well as my rundown on anaros now don't forget to do all the things that i ask you to do at the end of every one of these and as always stay tuned for more juicy dripping goodness here at a gay guy plays so what you're saying is this is gonna be bad isn't it it doesn't do a lot of damage oh god <laughs> <laughs> see what i did there no just no yes, okay